today and where we will go from here. One company, one promise. If you can imagine it, we will build the bridge to get you there. Cisco, the bridge to possible. Hi, and welcome to this week's Cisco Chat Live. I'll be your guest moderator, Giselle Omar. And just as we, before we start, I want you guys to know that please ask your questions uh, throughout the session and I will answer them at the very end. Our session today will be about Cisco Investments and great, I'm glad to have Hitesh Sayushpal, who is the Head of Portfolio Development for Cisco Investments here with us. Welcome, Hitesh. Thank you, Giselle. Very happy to be here. Awesome. So, Hitesh, uh, for the audience who isn't familiar with Cisco Investments, can you tell us a little bit more, give us a background uh, about Cisco Investments? Happy to, happy to. It's actually, I feel like it's one of Cisco's best kept secrets because we've been investing for as long as we've been acquiring. And most people associate uh, Cisco with acquisition excellence. But we've been investing as a corporate VC for over 25 years. And uh, annually, we put between two and $300 million off balance sheet into both new and follow-on investments. And uh, that portfolio over 25, 30 years of investing today is highly differentiated. What that means is we have some very high quality companies that complement Cisco's current strategy as well as set us up for success a few years down the road, both in areas that are core to Cisco as well as areas that might be adjacent or potentially new markets down the road. And uh, we do this globally. So we've got an investment portfolio that covers America, EMEA, APJC, and we've got teams and investments across 27 countries. So uh, a pretty global footprint of tracking innovation and a highly differentiated portfolio that uh, we're super excited to bring to Cisco Live, as well as take that as an opportunity to get, to get it closer to our customers and partners. So it sounds like Cisco Investments is a very important part of Cisco's innovation strategy. Can you tell me a little bit more about the type of startups that we're investing in? Yes, yes. So uh, Cisco Innovation, uh, Cisco Investments rather, is one of five innovative approaches we take to try and track uh, the market, right? So we build great products, we buy amazing companies, we uh, invest, and uh, we partner with companies like Google, Apple, AWS, and then we also co-develop with our customers and partners. The investing side of the house gives us a chance to put a strategic listening ear to the market, where VCs have spent, just in the last year, $340 billion in various types of startups. We invest in areas that are core to Cisco because we're a strategic investor, and we do that across uh, both a near-term sort of horizon as well as a long-term horizon. So areas that matter to Cisco, like next-gen networking, uh, the disruptions that are happening in the data center, we track those through investments. We also track very closely the security, cybersecurity space, data analytics, cloud, IoT, collaboration. These are areas of active investments, uh, certainly over the last two or three years, and we see a lot of investment happening in the future as well. One area that uh, we don't typically advertise our investments in, but we're pretty active in also, is silicon and optics. Uh, that area is super critical to Cisco's future, a strategic part of the market uh, that we also track very closely through our investments. Awesome, awesome. So I know as the head of portfolio development, your team is responsible for creating that bridge between our internal innovation and external innovation. Tell me more about that and why that's important for our customers. Yeah, it's important for two reasons. One, our customers are dealing with the same kind of disruptions we are as a company. But our customers also have the day job of running their companies. They're not in the business of tracking innovation necessarily. Of course, there's been a, uh, a resurgence, if you will, of corporate VCs across the globe. So many uh, customers are starting to go down the path of tracking investments to stay ahead of that disruption curve. But we have a team of about 60 professionals that does nothing but track the market, bring that external perspective to Cisco as we make strategic decisions about the future of the company. And uh, they're experts in their domains. So security knows everything that's going on in the cybersecurity space, a highly fragmented space where there is a ton of startups. If you're a customer that's looking to figure out which security startup to go track, which one to bring in-house for a pilot, that can be quite the task. 
And uh, what we can do by extending our expertise, this differentiated portfolio, is save customers the time, effort, energy that goes into tracking the startup landscape. Not just that, we go through a very rigorous process through uh, you know, what we call the investment review board and office hours internally in picking companies. So the companies in our portfolio are high quality and we've done the groundwork for our customers. And by working with Cisco Investments, by getting closer to the portfolio, they get access to some of the best innovators in the, in the market. That's one security example, but it applies to many other domains. Excellent. So as a customer, how can they go ahead and tap into this external innovation? Well, the best way to do that, we have a really great opportunity uh, here at Cisco Live. We're bringing 16 of our most innovative companies to San Diego. We're hosting them at our Innovation Garage themed uh, pavilion in the world of solutions. So one, the look and feel is going to blow the customer's minds. And then as they walk the pavilion and meet with these companies, they'll see both the quality of the entrepreneur and the quality of the innovation. So I highly encourage our, our customers, partners, the attendees at Cisco Live to walk through the pavilion. Awesome, awesome. And then I know this year we're doing something a bit different. We have thought leadership sessions going on within our village. Can you tell us a little bit more about those? Yeah, I'm happy to. And I think uh, credit to you for pulling this together for us. I know it's a big part of what you're trying to push for this year in the pavilion. Uh, but those 16 companies that are showcasing their technology are also going to be presenting at the theater pavilion. So we have a theater pavilion where you can you know, join us for uh, a 30 minute conversation with one of our portfolio companies. We have capacity for 100, 200 maybe people uh, sitting and standing room. And so we have about 30 of those planned for the four days. In addition, we've got some amazing panels with leaders from within the corporate development and investment team. Phil Kirk, who leads data, analytics, cloud, and collaboration, uh, is leading a, a session on machines that are taking over. We're going to be talking about how data analytics and automation are changing the world. Janie Ho, who leads uh, our data center practice, IoT practice, enterprise networking, will be talking about the disruption taking place in the data center with both external portfolio companies within the, within the portfolio, as well as one of our leaders from the data center space, Kastub Das, who heads product management there. And then we have a very exciting panel with several CTOs on the security side, which Prasad Parthasarthi, who leads our security business, will be, uh, will be leading. It's called Inside the Mind of the CTO. So super excited about those. And then there is main stage sessions where we are talking about investments. Uh, Rob Salvano is doing that at the partner experience. Uh, and then certainly uh, broadcast and telecast, try and get the word out and get people more excited about what we do here. Yeah, it's, I think it's definitely going to be one of our biggest and best. I know I say that at maybe Cisco Live, but this one's going to be really exciting. And mentioning the panels, we actually have Prasad here. Prasad, great to have you join us. Hi, Giselle. Great to be here. So, Prasad, um, you head our security investments and our M&A, and you have this exciting panel happening on Wednesday. Can you tell us a little bit more about the topics and our, our panelists? Sure, super excited to be hosting this panel at Cisco Live. Uh, it's a panel where we are bringing together three really best-in-class forwarding CTOs. And um, the, all these three CTOs represent businesses of different scale. We have Brett Hartman, who is CTO for our security business group. Our security business does about $2.5 to $3 billion in revenue, uh, and we grew 20% uh, year on year last quarter. So obviously a business of immense scale uh, and innovation. Uh, that's one. Then we have uh, John Oberide, who was the CTO and co-founder of uh, Duo Security, which we recently acquired. He will be on the panel as well. As we all know, Duo, Duo is one of the stellar uh, acquisition stories. And I'm super uh, proud, and associate to, uh, associate, proud to have been associated with the transaction as a deal lead. And it's a transaction which has got super positive early data points. So uh, it's a chance for everyone to hear from Doug, uh, from John O on the future of zero trust and authentication. And third, we have a CTO of Panacea. Panacea is one of our portfolio companies, much earlier stage. And we'd love to, uh, all of us would get a chance to understand how a CTO of an early stage company drives innovation. So uh, the intent here is to basically bring together, I would say, innovation drivers who are responsible for driving disruption at different scale. I mean, Cisco scale, Duo scale, and Panacea scale, and then bring them together and have them uh, basically marinate uh, their thoughts. So super excited about uh, this panel. Awesome, awesome. That's going to be really a lot of interesting perspectives. I definitely think it's going to be one of the best panels throughout all of Cisco Live. I agree. And, yeah, and Hitesh mentioned our 16 startups that are going to be in the village. Uh, I know we have some exciting startups from the security portfolio there. Can you tell us a little bit more about those? Yeah, I'm super excited to share that we have four, I would say, really best-in-class portfolio companies from security. Uh, uh, Behaviosec, Exabeam, um, 
final sale and threat question. And I'll, I'll quickly talk about each, uh, each one of those. But the, but the really cool thing about these four companies is that they covered both the application and infrastructure layer from a security standpoint. You have behavior, behavior sec that's basically uh, focusing on providing continuous authentication based on behavioral uh, biometrics. So basically, uh, think about high sensitive use cases. So today we have uh, Android solutions like Duo, which provide cloud, cloud based multi factor authentication, which are awesome uh, uh, authentication solutions. But we also want to provide coverage for high sensitive use cases uh, against hijacked sessions. So, what, I mean, we want to provide security in a sense, in a scenario where Giselle has been authentic authenticated using uh, Duo, but her session gets hijacked by someone. Someone just uh, removes Giselle from the desk and somebody takes her place. That's where BehaviorSec comes in because it basically maps the behavior between Giselle and the device. How does Giselle swipe her iPhone? Does she do it left from right? I mean, how hard does she press a tab? Based on that, can tell whether the person who's actually using this device is Giselle or not. I mean, so super exciting technology. That's what BehaviorSec brings. Then the next uh, portfolio company is Exabeam. They are basically, I would say, providing uh, the next in our modern SIM. Uh, SIMs have been around for several decades, but we all know the problem with SIMs. They create millions and gazillions of alerts, which defeats the purpose of having a SIM in the first place. Our security operations and SOC centers, they're inundated by these gazillion alerts, and they're not able to focus on threats that really matter. So Exabeam has got great traction in using machine learning and telemetry to provide really smart analytics and really reducing false positives. So these two play the application and infrastructure layer, I would say, and then we have uh, Panacea, which basically focuses on providing continuous cybersecurity posture, hygiene, and uh, risk assessment. So today, uh, most of our enterprises and customers, we have a plethora of uh, security solutions from firewalls to email gateways to DNS monitoring. But how do we know that? How do, how do they assess and quantify that they're secure? I mean, which do they need to dial down on email security? Should they dial up on DNS? That's where Panacea comes in and provides a risk-based assessment. And finally, Threat Quotient, which basically is really providing a great source for ingesting massive alerts from various different sources, uh, virus total, Flashpoint, uh, uh, our Talos uh, Threat Research. It's basically ingesting all these alerts and making it easier to provide smarter feeds to SIMs and other solutions. So all four, I would say, in summary, touch infrastructure and applications layer. And the common theme across all four is continuous monitoring plus smart telemetry. Awesome. Wow. So a lot of great things going on. So Hitesh Prasad, thank you for your questions. I want to remind the audience that send in your questions. We're talking about Cisco Investments, Cisco Live, and everything that's happening in security in our portfolio. So I do see a couple of questions that just came in. Uh, Hitesh, this one is for you. Uh, what are some of the cool things that the portfolio development team does for the startups that we invest in? Uh, sure, Giselle. And before I answer that question, Prasad, interesting mix of both American and European companies there That's right, in yeah. the portfolio that you're bringing to Cisco Live. That's right. So again, yeah. speaking to the Probably, global reach yeah. that you've created over the last few years of investing. Uh, on the portfolio development side, really, Giselle, what we're trying to do is leverage our position both as a, a world-class enterprise technology company as well as a world-class corporate venture capitalist to try and differentiate Cisco in the marketplace. We do that two ways. One is by providing opportunities to the portfolio to connect with business units, customers, and partners. And two, by bringing innovation from the outside closer to our business units, customers, and partners in a manner that is mutually beneficial, either allows us to take an internally innovated product and complement it with something from the outside, or solve a problem that a customer is trying to solve in a new creative way, or give a partner a chance to build a new business practice that allows them to further their own business, if you will, in this new modern dynamic world. We do a couple of things I'll highlight for you. One, we call them innovation days. So we take select portfolio companies to uh, our customers and partners. We did one here in California recently. We did another one in London. We're doing another one in Canada in the next month or two. So we'll bring portfolio companies into these pitch days. We'll bring a handful of customers. They get a chance to interact, get to know each other, understand what the, the portfolio company is doing if you're a customer in the room how they solve a certain problem or disrupt a certain space. For the portfolio company, it's an opportunity to understand what problems or opportunities the customer's trying to solve. We try to play matchmaker, and in doing so, both differentiate Cisco, put ourselves out there as an innovative company, uh, build on internal innovation, which our customers are very familiar with, and help people get the most out of the, uh, you know, the combination of internal innovation and external innovation. That's one. 
The other thing we try to do for our portfolio companies is give them exposure to all the right parts of Cisco. So some of our most high profile events, partner summit, impact, country leader roundtable, Cisco Beat, which is our internal team uh, uh, event, if you will, company-wide, will feature innovation from portfolio companies, from the Cisco investments forward to try and drive visibility and potentially through that visibility, awareness, consideration, and preference for that external innovation in areas where it makes sense. So those are a couple of things we do. We certainly have a lot of other levers we can pull to try and drive that mutually beneficial value for Cisco and our portfolio companies. Uh, and uh, Cisco Live is actually one of those. So excited about what we're going to be able to do next week as well. Yeah, me too. And we'll all be there. So really excited about that. Um, I do have a question for you, Prasad, that just came in. Uh, speaking about the global portfolio that you mentioned, yeah. what, are, uh, what are some of the specific geographies that we're tracking in cybersecurity that you see some of the hot stuff that's going on at the moment? That's a, that's a, great, that's a great question. And I want to go back to a point that Hitesh made about our global reach and the size of our investment um, team. Cisco is probably the only enterprise company of its scale on this planet which has got, which has invested in really standing up investment machine across the globe. So these 40 to 60 professionals are distributed across Silicon Valley, EMEA, Israel, APJ, China, Australia. So we have investment professionals tracking sector trends across markets, across geographies. Now, if you look at a space like security, I partner very closely with uh, my Israel domain lead, Daniel Karp, and with my MAR lead, uh, Ben Lingathoti, in really surfacing and identifying the best in class security companies. So, if, if you were to ask me about a sector, call it application security or runtime security, I would be able to share the best in class companies in the space across geographies simply because I have access to Daniel and Ben and their uh, reach uh, locally. So if you look across the innovation that's happening in security, I would say a lot of it is driven uh, within US, a uh, lot of it is driven obviously by Silicon Valley. Then we've got a security hub that's emerging in the Washington DC and Boston area. Washington DC uh, uh, innovation is being driven by proximity to federal and government. I mean, they require really high sensitive enterprise grade security solutions. So that's spawning, I would say, a lot of uh, innovation and uh, company building uh, in that part of the world. Outside US, I would say Israel remains a very active ecosystem for uh, surfacing next-gen uh, best-in-breed security companies. And a lot of it is driven by Israel's political uh, environment, which requires them to always stay ahead of its uh, enemies. So there is a security DNA in everyone. And I think what's really cool is that the Israeli ecosystem or the Israeli um, entrepreneurs are able to bring that security DNA from military to uh, mainstream so that our enterprise customers can access that. And uh, lately, I've also started to see uh, good innovation coming out of a market like Australia. I mean, uh, a company that I would like to point out is Cloud Conformity. Uh, they're playing in the, in the space of um, cloud security posture management, IaaS compliance. Small, uh, Still a very early stage team, but they've got great traction already in US. So what's happening really is that SaaS has really made, made the world really flat. So if you've got a good idea, you've got a good use case, I mean, the SaaS version makes it really easy for you to service your customer from wherever you are. And markets like Australia are tapping into uh, the goodness of SaaS. Awesome. I didn't know Australia is doing a lot of things in SaaS. That's good to know. Awesome. Uh, let me see if we have any other more questions. Okay, that looks like all for now. So next week, Cisco Live, you're ready. You're ready. ready. I'm ready. Looking forward to Our startups are ready. We're looking forward to meeting you. As Hitesh mentioned earlier, we do have an opportunity. If you would like to meet with any of our startups, you can set up a, a briefing or a, a tour. Please reach out to us. And um, other than that, thank you so much. And we'll stay um, in touch next week. We'll see you guys. See you guys. Thank you.